with on Monday with the new challenge. And so this time, I think it's shared only now, like uh, just during the standup. But normally we we will share the challenge uh, from next week on. We'll share the challenge document on, on basically uh, on Sunday evening, such that you will have a chance before the Monday standup to have actually an understanding and especially uh, before this current, like the challenge walks through, that you have a chance to, to see it and then you will be able to ask some questions, things that are not clear. And that proactive means for me that one, that you actually, you, you, you get the best out of it in this short time because between Sunday evening or Monday morning to Monday challenge walks through, that you go through quickly things and you, you basically made up your mind, you know, what are, do I understand what are we supposed to do and and prepare some questions to ask because the earlier you understand exactly what needs to be done the better you plan and then the better you plan the more the easier it gets for you to finish and that really discipline and I cannot overemphasize that that's the essence of work you know it's not people don't care if you are smart or not smart if you can do this or if you can do that but if I am in a company and I have something to be done, I would really admire people who just do it on time, right? So basically just because that means I can trust that whenever I have a client I'm talking to and I can, I can ask my, you know, the, my employee to do something and I can trust that the person delivers. And business is really driven, uh, global level business especially, is driven that way and so it, that part of like using time appropriately so that means the time between you know sunday evening or monday morning to the challenge document is all about not about learning too much but it's really making sure you know dedicate that time to go through the challenge documents even if you are you know traveling on a car on your mobile find a way to access that skim through and establish for you like what is what needs to be done because when we have this meeting now, then you, you are able to prepare a few questions and then, you know, there's not that much work, like, you know, right? Because now you understand. Then the afternoon, based on your time, you can actually make sure then, okay, you know, how am I going to prioritize? You know, okay, so then these are the tutorials. So in this tutorial, I can actually learn this one and I can do this one. So you can really plan. It's a strategy. You know, overwhelm will come if you don't have a strategy. If you don't have a strategy, you know, and if you are thinking all of it at one time, it just is going to be overwhelming. And overwhelming means you are going to be freezed, like you're not going to do much, right? So that strategy is key and you learn the art of it. Of course, in one week, you might not be good at it, but in a couple of weeks, at least make sure that you're going to be good at it, strategizing things. And it has nothing got to do sometimes with your how much you know. It's not about your skill. It's not about, you know, how intelligent, whatever you think you are. It's about strategy. A good strategy will save you, you know, it allows you to finish something so impossible and, and makes it possible. And then, of course, the quality of it depends on how much you are aware, you know, you know this thing. So if, it, of course, coding is so super easy for you, then, of course, when you do that, when you start implementing the strategy, it becomes easier, right? Okay. So I hope we have a common understanding there. And if you have always a question around there, ask uh, ask me and ask everyone um, during either a tutorial or a stand up or uh, a challenge workshop. So I assume we have established that part now. So let's go through the challenge document. So, um, so again, all challenge documents come in similar way. So we have the challenge document, this one as well in 10X for probably a couple of weeks, we might be choosing to use a Google document for now, but we might change um, and from, I don't know which week onwards, when we feel that everybody's comfortable with 10X, we might just be shifting to 10X because 10X has the cap capability and easiness actually to make the challenge documents uh, readable um but so so the the current you know just the week one challenge is user analytics in telecommunication industry and we try sometimes depending on the need 
So this week we are a bit more even story. Uh, we made it more a story, but it's a, a clear, a true story in some way. It's not like completely out of a blue, but it, you know, that of course is at some point we were talking with one person and who gave us this data to be able to do something similar uh, analysis. So th the part is that it's more we say it, the same thing is that you are, you know, you are good already. So don't, we always start from that. You are already good. This is just your normal work, right? So you have been hired, you have been verified to be, to have all the capacity and this, you know, the knowledge, but of course, you know, you will acquire it, but you, we have a problem and you want to solve it, that problem. You want to address it in a certain way. And the only difference between our challenge document and reality is that we have taken time to break what you need to do into systems. Otherwise, it's the same, right? So in, in an actual in working environment, that's how it comes. It might not come very well structured like challenge document, but it would come as like, you know, the your boss or the team member or the CEO would just tell you like, this is what we need. They, they might need, they might tell your boss, like the senior person, and then the senior person then tells you by breaking it into tickets or into projects, okay? So it's very similar. But in this case, the role is that you are, as you are helping an investor, uh, whether a company called Telco is, you know, worth buying, uh, given its logs, the log uh, that it collects in its operation and what it, you know, telecommunications operate usually, of course, they give you packets, SMS, as well as, you know, um, data. And so in this case, a lot more we focus on the data component. They have a call as well as a data log. That means who called, you know, what. So that is entered in their system. It's a system collects automatically that, as well as also when data streaming, when, you know, uh, in a mobile or in a whatever that you are actually using something that goes through first the, the telecommunication provider. And then the telecommunication provider has, of course, a route to basically um, take you through to the server and the server response and that happens. So the telecommunication always then keeps the logs. So you have what you call um, CDR and XDR. These are basically just a log systems for call or for data, okay? And so you're basically gonna be um, looking, analyzing this data from four perspective, and then you're gonna be writing, advising. So you're summarizing, you are analytics engineer, data engineer, as well as uh, machine learning engineer in this sense, you're gonna be using these three skills to be able to provide you know, what, whether the telecommunication is worth buying or worth buying means that it will make more profits if it's bought now, uh, or it's kind of decaying. That means there is a lot of churn uh, churn is like if people are losing, if people are not calling as much, you know, if the time series part of it is not is not doing well, you might say like, okay, no, the company is really actually not doing well. And in that case, you might advise the uh, investor, maybe this is risky, you know, so risk estimation is what you're going to do um, uh, here. Okay, hopefully it's clear. If it's not clear, you can always type or ask, raise your hand. Okay, I will proceed. And so the data, so this time we give you the data as a Postgres dump. So the, the data was loaded into Postgres uh, database with a certain schema. And then we have dumped that one using PG dump. And then your role is of course to restore uh, using PG restore the the database into your local system and be able to understand the data and then connect to the Postgres database using Python or SQL, you know, um, whichever you choose and work, you know, extract the data, you know, kind of um, do some analysis and everything, the distribution for, uh, you know, the description of our attributes are located exactly in inside, you know, if you click all of that, so you, you get the descriptions as well as also the SQL file is, the dump file is um, um, there as well. And the learning outcome usually are, basically there is a lot of things that you learn here and, but most importantly, and the most, you know, you have to focus as well. It's not, 
just because you can write a code sometimes mm -hmm. may not be useful, especially in this case, as an analytics engineer, you know, you are supposed to really digest this thing and communicate it. So understanding and reasoning business context is very key. And that, that differentiates between people who really pass an interview or not, because a person who just knows that the technical thing sometimes cannot contextualize what what's why the, their code is useful. So in that case, understanding the business context and reasoning and writing in all of your writing, it doesn't hurt if you start from always reviewing the business context. So whether in trim, final, anywhere in your communication, make sure you have highlighted or summarized the business context and why, what you are going to say. So if it is an interim report, you know, you, you highlight the business context and what needs to be done and what the role of this interim report is, right? So almost always start from that business context and, and you will learn, you know, you will, this one part of learning outcome, as well as also understanding existing data and extracting insight is, uh, and learning a lot of statistical distribution sampling visualization techniques and how to summarize those in communicate is another learning outcome as well as building dashboards using you know plotly and other uh, uh, streamlit is another one and then thinking about statistical distribution so this difference that's what we why we ask you some uh, you know why we had in one in the one hour test a statistical test because ultimately when you are trying to summarize it is important to know certain things, you know, whether what is mean and median and average, when do they make sense and when, when they don't make sense. What are other things like, for example, if you just get a result, something, uncertainty is important. So anything, anything that business decision requires uncertainty, you know, how confident are we uh, with that recommendation? And that one is basically whenever you say confidence or how sure you are when you're asking that, you, there it has a statistical concept. So you have to understand the sampling, the bias, whether it is a full sample that you have, for example, and what are the possible biases that, you, you know, for your recommendation and things like that. And then of course, also the modularity, writing modular Python uh, or JavaScript codes. And so that's another learning outcome. And this time we slightly changed our approach because we keep saying to people, you know, learn modular and object-oriented programming. But people start, uh, we grade for that as well. We, you know, we, we try to give feedback, but it didn't arrive to a point where I, I think we, we think is, should be done. And so what we are doing this time is actually, we ask you to code in the style of an, uh, a well-known package. For example, in, in, in for this week, we chose Streamlit. So you have to actually browse the Streamlit source code and open source code and learn from them the techniques of writing modular and good advanced code. And, and we will be comparing how close you, your code is to them, right? So we'll always, every week we will choose, and probably next week is uh, maybe Pandas. And after that, it could be TensorFlow. And after that is uh, OpenAI um, uh, API. And, and so we'll always, just every week, we will choose one open source, very well-known package and we ask you to look at the source code so that you can you are able to write code similar to them right so that that forces you and hopefully it gives you and the first you know will provide also a walkthrough for that uh, just in the beginning but this would give you a certain a really clear guideline on what we mean by object oriented you know modular or you know professional coding okay so on the competency mapping we have a number of competencies that we track to be able to really um, identify who is actually in the track and who's not in track we need support so we use it for our feedback to give you feedback and so some of them are professionalism earlier i mentioned about professionalism if if you are in a team if you don't ask questions people really think like you don't either understand or you're just basically not listening right so you know professionalism is reflected it, it's not, you know, don't look, you're going to be, I think someone said it, this is unfamiliar to you and act like that. Don't pretend that you know what you are doing now, because unless you have had a global level job, it means that journey is new. So it's better to learn new things, you know, and don't assume you know it, because that's usually our, everyone's mistake, including my mistake, everybody's mistake, is that 
we try to approach the same thing with what we have been using. And, and a number of wise people say, if you try, you know, with the same method, and if you if you try the same method and expect something different, they call that one, that's insane, right? That's foolish. So I think let's get out of it and learn that professionalism. It means you have to learn some new, you have to respond to that. And so that professionalism for a global rebel job is a lot more comes in, in how you address yourself, in how you assert, how you communicate, how you ask, you know, you should be fighting to ask questions because someone, even if you don't have really question, I mean, we will, we will, you will have a career team to giving you assignment on really how to ask question, list question. There is going to be a, a challenge on that as well, but it's really que asking question, even when you don't have question is a key thing to show people that you are in, you understand a digital world of communication, you know, an online communication. So, but in our case, it's about actually, we also measure the global level job readiness, professionalism through your way of articulating the business context and the business values and why, you know, it's important to do what you're doing. And the other part is collaborating communication and software development frameworks, such as, you know, using proper GitHub um, and writing modular course and packaging and Python programming using advanced Python programming. This time we are, as I said, we give you a reference, uh, a streamlit Python code source code that you should browse and learn how they code their package so that you can adapt uh, similar techniques. And, and SQL programming, data analytics and engineering, MLFs and opto ML, deep learning and machine learning. In this case, it's just more for you to model some uh, time series sentiment. In our case, actually, in this case, there was no, there isn't much, but more about uh, time series and, and kind of predictive, um, you know, time series modeling. And then mobile and app programming, this is much more learning about how to use, how to build dashboards and understand the basic building blocks of, you know, UI, UX, how you present your work in, in, a, in a web environment, okay? So the teams are, here are the teams that will be your contact. And then starting from this week, we also award badges that are for the different five uh, um, areas and the best visualization that someone has done based on the quality of visualization, understandability, scammability, and choice of visualization, there will be one badge. And then the other badge is quality of code. And then the other one is innovative approach to analysis and writing and presentation and most supportive in the community. These badges will accumulate to give you really a lot of advantage over time because if you are known for really, you know, uh, most supportive in the community and if there are work that is really required a lot more working with the community, you know, you, that would start um, becoming value. And then sometimes in the weeks, we have a group work that we assign you into groups to work together. Um, and sometimes in individual. So this project is an individual. It means you can help each, you know, you can work as long as you submit something different, your own work, you can work together. We really encourage it's a, it's a work environment. It's not an actual, you know, university style. You really can work together. And we encourage group like kind of working together, working to achieve something better than you could have achieved alone. That one is encouraged. And some of you, you have seen, uh, whenever we detect something in that area is not, didn't um, happen or we, we made a mistake, we correct ourselves. But we ask you to be really work. We check every detail of your Git comments and how much is different in how much, if, if you're really just committing the same thing of the other, if it's a copy, then we don't like that. And we spend a lot of time to really, tr no one passes through that gate. That means no one gets unfair credit. But anything group work, working together to try to be the best, it's encouraged because this is work. And as work, we want the best, right? So don't, don't feel bad to work together, to get helped by others, to help others. Really encouraged. It's even has a badge for it. And, you know, we reward that habit but of course we don't want just uh, someone just to copy without understanding and i absolutely when when we suspect we get you into a google meet and we ask you to explain every code and if you can't explain it you know in a reasonable way so you might not explain like 100 but at least we expect some reasonable understanding 
If you don't do that, then we think that's a copy and that's not a good habit because that, you know, that means, you know, it's better to submit what the small amount of work you have done than just something that you copied because it doesn't help you. You have to explain whatever you copy, you are saying, you know, I can explain this. It might not be, I have done this, but at least I can explain this. And this is really important. I mean, and don't think we take that one too serious. Therefore, we take most of our time is spent in ensuring that we don't pass that. If someone uh, uh, in that kind of habit we re realize, we become very, very tough on them. So make sure just that. So work together, understand something, whatever you understand, submit. Um, and um, and if you don't understand something, even if you work together, submit what you have, you understood, you know? So just that. And late policy, I think for now it should be, um, this is explained here. I think interim submissions within um, one to six hours late have a certain amount above a, a six hour late. It's basically, uh, you may receive feedback, but will not receive a grade uh, for it. So it's written there, read it. So the instruction is where the actual project starts. And so it, it, it tries to highlight sometimes very detailed, sometimes slightly vague, but you should ask us, of course, if something is vague, but what happens is that at the end of this week, you are expected to basically write a reusable code for data preparation and cleaning code connected. Uh, so also your code is not just like called each other, but you must understand, start understanding pipelining codes. So that means when one process finished, the other process starts and things like that. And so there are a number of frameworks for now. We're not going to be, we're going to be easy. You, you can use scikit pipeline, but as we go on, we also start going to be using Kedro and other really uh, data engineering frameworks that connects, um, that builds like, for example, TensorFlow has its own pipelining chaining and many of these big packets have their own uh, chaining methods uh, to be able so that it can analyze, you know, in, in a pipeline manner. So understanding pipelines. And then, of course, you will have and learn and build already have done use, using Streamlit dashboard with even you can inject your own uh, JavaScript React code to it because last time you have done something similar. But, you know, at least we expect some dashboard. And definitely there's going to be a lot of SQL writing, either using um, SQL Alchemy, you know, in Python or Pandas. But at least you write and we encourage you to write a lot more of it with plain SQL, uh, at least using pandas SQL method, or just basically being able to really be familiar because a lot of people would ask you in uh, actually job interviews and job uh, technical assessments, they ask you a lot of SQL knowledge. So, and in plain SQL, in that case, they don't ask you only with Python, but actually can you write a query? So start really learning from now. And so basically your project folder should mirror basically what is here is in here is basically just the streamlit part. So, you know, so they have, this is a package. So you start really exploring source course and your code as if it's, it can be, even if, if you were to implement one thing for a streamlit, you know, you can contribute that code to streamlit if you write it in their guideline, in their style. So. You know, but the most important part for for us is that you learn the you know programming not just from us but from the best packages out there um, from you know because we want you to write those kind of packages in the future. So the best place to learn is actually to to start writing like them uh, from from here, right? So the actual the actual data analysis is divided into four: user overview user engagement, user experience, and user satisfaction analysis. Um, but the very first task is about exactly uh, a report on a streamlit understanding, right? So this one will be, we ask you to report this thing on Friday, not, not today, uh, together with your own submission, but we make it as task one because you have to start reading and learning from it just starting today. Now, after this, the first thing I want you to do is go through and browse the streamlit coding style, you know? How do they code? Do you understand some of their advantage? What are the packages they're using? 
um, you know, is that, are those packages, do you understand them? You don't spend that much time, you only spend today, you know, this afternoon while planning for your analysis, you also just go through and uh, read their code. I would say spend about two hours um, just to learn their, you know, browse their code open and how it's structured and then take notes, you know, do you understand most of their coding style or if you don't understand, ask questions in Slack because it will help. Like, you know, if you don't, if you have never used decorators before, for example, why do people in Streamlit, they use uh, decorators? And you might see some decorators are at property, some are different. So you can start discussing that, you know, like you start really decomposing their, their code base, their source code to learn the best. And then if there are packages that they import, you don't understand, you might ask, you know, what is, you know, why are, you know, what is this package useful for? And so it's really more about learning from the best uh, in that sense this will continue almost always every week task one becomes now browsing somebody's source code next week will be pandas and then learn how they code you know if they are using async programming you might say what is async programming how did, how it helps if they are using you know some other things you would do so you know start getting used to browsing source codes um, of package that you use you know not just you are not just only a user you are a programmer so you, you must you, you must see the source code okay so it guides you by just answering these questions already in your report it's a very small report we expect but at least you are reviewing the source code of um, uh, so one of for my you know and one of the company that i was leading for example the very first challenge document i give people is that i give them the company some package source Python code, and then I ask them, draw, you know, summarize it for me. Because if you can understand my code and know how to read the code, then I know that you can edit the code. So that that's that is the spirit, um, and um, hopefully that's clear. But from task two to task five, the as I said, the very core part of this week is basically EDA, uh, as well as some time series prediction as well as just a dashboard. And they are divided into the analysis, the EDA uh, is divided into this, okay? So the user overview analysis, this is basically, it's written here. It is the, you know, basically the lifeblood of any business um, is customers. And so you want to understand the customers, um, how, how, what, who they are, what their usage is and, and, and stuff. So, so basically, so what, your streamlit understand to prepare your code so that one is already you have done in task one but for the actual start by identifying the just like you did before identify top 10 handsets used by the customers identify top three handsets of manufacturers you know which manufacturer is most used you know and then identify top five handsets per top three handset manufacturers that means of the people that they are using the customers what are the manufacturers um uh, represented and then do some kind of short interpretation and then so you have an explanation what is cdr and xdr cdr is basically as i said logs of calls when you make a, a call to somebody that is actually logged and put into a database um and then when you are using data like in your mobile or in you know basically um in the DSP, like, the, like, you know, the service provider. So basically any data part you request goes as a log, it is stored in the X, in their XDR database. And then in their CDR log is the call detail record. Okay. So, and you should understand what that is because the code is, the data is given. Um, and yeah, so you would basically be able to then start asking, answering these questions, aggregate per user, the following information number of XDR sessions. So by XDR sessions, anything, whether it's Google, email, YouTube, Netflix, gaming, and everything. So all of them, they are XDRs, and then session duration for every session, the duration and the total download and upload data, and the total data volume in bytes during the sessions. And then in task 2.2, you do some um, exploratory data analysis describing all relevant variables, analyze basic metrics, for example, mean, median, etc. of the data sets, explain, for example, their importance for the global objective, 
and conduct an end graphical univariate analysis that it's basically by univariate it means just dimension by dimension that means feature by feature and by dimension you know uh, multivariate means not only features but the, the relationship between multiple features okay so that's what it is either bivariate in bivariate for example you can use uh, 2d scatter plots with color as well as also with their um, you know, uh, size of the the scatter, for example, those becomes now four, four dimensions. So you can use more as well as also if you decompose it into PCA, you know, there are many other things that you would do. So this basically gives you every detail, what at least you do. Once you start doing this, you start realizing just like week zero, you might understand, okay, you know, I learn, I understand what they're trying to tell me. It is really ultimately to build a full context of understanding such that ultimately I can I can understand whether the data is sufficient or the data is not sufficient, the data is quality or not quality. And then based on that, I will build my, then whenever I build then a predictive analysis or some kind of exploratory business intelligence, then I can, I can use all of this understanding in that. So that's exactly what um, uh, you're trying to do. So these are all more for um, analysis. So this is basically the overview analysis, the customer understanding, the service understanding. Then as you get into engagement uh, analysis, the engagement is everything that how the users engage to our system. So session frequency, how are they coming back? You know, if, of course, if data was not working, then they, they will not come back. Or, you know, if calls are not quality, they don't call probably that often. So these are proxies to tell, to help you understand engagement and the quality of the service as well. So the duration of the session, of course, if it is really nice, sometimes people watch, continue watching YouTube, but if it is, of course, the data is not really good, you know, the, basically the duration of watching a YouTube video becomes smaller. So it, it, it helps you build that engagement. And the session's total traffic. So again, that exactly another metric to help you understand engagement. So that part as well is decomposed in here as task 3.1, you know, aggregate total traffic, you know, understand top three, use clustering, um, you know, uh, unsupervised learning, k-means clustering to group into k-engagement clusters, you know, and then label them as high engagement, medium engagement, and low engagement, and be able to do that. And in task four is the experience analytics. So this one is again, you know, uh, it's really to try to to focus on network parameters like TCP transmission, round trip time, and throughput. So this is basically that experience. And again, the the device characteristics like the handset type, uh, whether that it depends on that. So, for example, a cheap phone versus a very expensive phone, you might really start seeing differences in that. So that experience is it? Does it come the experience? Was it positive or negative? Was it negative because of our service, the telecommunication service, or is it because of if, for example, whether it's expensive phone or cheap phone, the service is the same, then you know it, it doesn't matter with the phone, the handset, but it's most likely uh, a problem with telecommunication um, part, right? So this will help you build by looking at some of these things, network parameters, you will, you will build uh, those understanding. Again, here we recommend certain things to do and it's already you know so you have like average tcp trans retransmission rtt handset types you know throughputs and all that is um, you are given here right and then in the satisfaction analysis again you know how do you quantify satisfaction you know you need to use some form of again another proxy uh, and this is basically combining experience and engagement um, so because engagement earlier, I told you, is more about the, it, it, it tells us a lot more about their engagement. It's, it might be behavior, uh, the individual's behavior. It might be our quality of service. It might be their um, handset. So it's just basically if they engage a lot, that's useful because the more they engage, the statistics become better and better. Of course, if you are using, analyzing anything from less engaged users, you might not know the real reason. So now engagement on one side gives you, you know, some confidence that you have actually good data. And then experience on the other hand, 
uh, whether it's their own phone or whether it's the, the telecommunications problem. So you have on the other side. So for highly engaged users, the service quality, when you combine these two, you get some form of satisfaction, right? So whether they are satisfied or not. So, so again, you will do, as we suggest, you do some kind of clustering, again, decomposing these people, the customers into satisfied and not satisfied users. For example, if you do uh, k-means clustering with k is equal to two. And so these are basically what we suggest as activities. And a lot of this is a recommendation. So if you do only this, it's okay, it's sufficient. But of course, what we want you is that to go above and more and show, demonstrate your own also thinking uh, part through discussion with others, through reading and through anything, right? So that is the part. And tutorials are scheduled. The current tutorial in the morning is here. While later, uh, Remet will go through Streamlit source code. And here today's understanding is just understanding advanced code base, efficient and modular coding ability to help others, as well as understanding data comes here. Um, and then ability to help others tomorrow. There will be in the morning, data extraction, cleaning, transformation, and formatting. We just review a little bit. So uh, Emitna will do that. And then Emitna and Rahmet together will also in the afternoon, you know, uh, kind of going through working with PostgreSQL using uh, pure SQL, Pandas, or SQL Alchemy. Um, and there it's much more of, of course, proactive to self-learn, share references, intermediate to advanced SQL techniques and data understanding and exploration. And Wednesday that you have, again, just data modeling, time series analysis mostly uh, from Mahalit. And basically, again, there is just modeling and ML ops uh, is um, your kind of the key performance indicators. And then Thursday, mostly just on dashboard. Uh, Rehmet will go through again. You already probably know design thinking, dashboard design, uh, as well comes in there. So we will not have any tutorial on Friday so that you can focus at least from technical side so that you focus mostly on work and delivery. And the deliveries are as we, so Wednesday, uh, almost always we have two deliveries. If it's a one week project, two deliveries. If it's a, a two weeks project, we have a, at least three deliveries. So one on, if it's two weeks, you will one in the first week of Wednesday, in the first week of uh, Saturday and in the second week of Tuesday. So there, there will be, but for now it's a one week. So you will have only delivery Wednesday and Saturday. And then uh, on Wednesday, you will just have to basically the link to your GitHub as well as a, 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 an interim report in the form of 15 slides uh, that describes task two and your, your, your contribution or your progress so far in task two and task three. And, and the final submission will be on Saturday that will be the first is the report for task one, which means you review of the streamlist source course, what you have learned, you know, what are the techniques that you have gained, which packets and all that, basically what was uh, put there as a, as a question or thinking something to think. You can, uh, this is basically from one to three pages. So let's say, but you can also use it as just this one also you can blog it if you want because so many people want to understand you know some advice on how codes are written so you might in the future use it if you use it for yourself but also you can blog it and then the other one is summarize your finding from task two to five and this one in the form of 30 slides this is basically what you're going to present to you the client it's you know expected to be a one hour presentation you're going to present uh, you know assume write it as if you are presenting all your finding uh, for that investor, whether this is an arguing and giving evidence, you know, kind of uh, with that. So basically, this is written what you should take care, definitely motivate, almost always start from the business understanding and, you know, how the methodologies you chose help answer the business question and then go through evidences, you know, and then conclusions and claims 
whether it is your recommendations um, so in that challenge in that report and then of course your final link which you basically have to um, merge everything into one either the main uh, branch and and so then you you put your branch uh, there um, so and if you have any deployed dashboard either in the streamly cloud or netlify or other uh, uh, free web hosting services you also just a link to that okay and then here are leaderboard how they are getting computed as well as references are are given so i know that i went through quickly but i hope this is clearer but let's start questions if you if you have questions you might feel a bit again just like always overwhelmed uh, it's okay just ask questions it gets normal and we know you will you will do it by friday by saturday you will surprise yourself okay so let me stop there and any questions i will answer So, you know, if there are no questions, usually that's a bad sign, but I take it because I like to take anything bad. So I take it that you all understand it. Kerot. Um, yeah. So good morning, everyone. So my question uh, is for the interim submission on Wednesday. Uh, are we supposed to, are we expected to submit uh, our findings or our progress? Because I, I think I heard you say progress. But both, right? In a way, progress and finding are similar. In a sense, yeah, it's like so far, if you make any conclusion, if you make any insights, just present them as well. So far, because in on, on Monday and Tuesday, or also Wednesday during the day, you might be working and analyzing. So you might, okay, you know, hand sets are like that. You know, the number of handsets are like this, the number of manufacturers are like that, top, whatever. So you might have understood already some of these things and you just put them there like, as your finding, right? Because you will use them also later. And others, the things that you have done, also you just say like, I'm okay, currently, it's basically you are showing to the investor, currently I have found so far this much and I'm working on this much and I plan to work that, that one. So you are, we're kind of presenting it that way. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it does. It does. Thank you. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, So for the slide uh, or for the presentation, do you have a template or we use our own? Uh, because if uh, I, I usually use uh, Beamer and uh, I, I, I'm using Ubuntu, so the I, I mean, I think Microsoft program, yeah, yeah. You know, we don't have any make it a, a good design is good, so you can use some people use Canva because it, it mm. provides you a very much beautiful. Some people might use Latex, uh, they are already familiar. Some people use Microsoft, some people use anything, some people use Google Slide. We don't, I think, the most important part okay. is a good design is good. I mean, it's almost always it's a, a choice. But it must be clear and it must not be too much stake. You know, you know, just don't put too much stakes. I mean, those ones are again um, um, the a slide versus report difference is that one. So mm -hmm. you can use your own slide. We don't I don't think we provide um, any template, but just yeah. So make sure that it's understandable. If there are any a lot of text one one wants to put, you should put it as part of some, let's say, explanation slides later. Um, mm. But I would say, just try to really prepare it for presentable, you know, okay. with, Thanks. with figures and yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, cool. Okay, Kerot, if you have another question, you can ask, uh, or was it just from the previous? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm sorry to come back. So my question is uh, for the attributes, for the attribute description, I think the access is uh, locked. So okay. can, uh, okay. and also Kerot. for, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, for that is listening, so she would basically put that one. Um, and if it's not all in one folder, we have to put everything in one folder. So I will make sure that has happened just after this call as well. So everything you will find it also on the folders that is shared. So yeah, 
but they are doing it right now as we speak. Okay. And for the code for folder that's uh, provided, can you, I don't know why it's provided. I think it's uh, related to uh, health or di diabetes. Uh, so are we supposed to use it as a starter or uh, on the file, uh, on the folder that's shared? Uh, shared? Yeah. Yeah. So that one is There's for the tutorials. Code. No, I mean, you don't, you're not, so a lot of the codes there is just for tutorials when they, you know, we share everything for the whole week. But as I say, that's why just don't bother about too much. Only just bother what what matters to you. But that one is for 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 the tutorials. They they probably will demonstrate some some parts using that data or or that. So it's much more when the things we share are not all to be used. You know, it's just the most important document you have is the challenge document. The rest are sometimes we put some things. You know, a, a tutor. Why? Because they want to use that one, they might put, but don't bother about it. And that's for everyone. So if it is confusing, we can limit that ones. But for now, we just think it's better to share every, you know, to share everything and build together. And tutorials, you'll find them there even before their time. But it's not to really give you pressure. It's just, you know, work and in your in your time step uh, strategy. So don't bother about others. If it is helpful, great. If it doesn't have the most important part is just the challenge document and what is what we told you in that document and we every evaluation comes from that document so the very yeah nothing out of that if, if everything then it will be it's either in the challenge document or when you submit the guideline in the submission portal those two are the the most important parts okay is that clear now okay. yeah it is it is thank you okay <laughs> Uh, hi everyone, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I have two questions. Uh, one is like uh, in terms of our performance, like would it matter like if we start coding right now or uh, midweek? Uh, you know, like I, when I code, like I like to make a plan before I start coding. So yeah. it might take time, like even in week zero, like I used to do like two or three days reading then after i make my plan then i start coding and create a punch and stuff like that i i can really really you know 99 percent confidence i tell you that will not work just start coding start doing things like plan but don't wait until because you will not have time so a good plan will definitely save you a lot of time but doesn't in this case it's too short for many of the tasks we do we ask you so I would say, yes, plan, prepare, you know, do parallelly. Just don't, learning, you know, a lot more people take knowledge too serious. It doesn't help as much, as much as, you know, it's a repetition that helps you because you will forget knowledge. But the most important part is to, to get the knowledge that you need for that task, do it, and then iterate and repeat and discuss that, make it active let every knowledge help you achieve your goal if you accumulate too much knowledge yeah you know if you have to, but it's it's really overestimated i would say get the the just practical knowledge that you need start doing it but plan definitely and then you know and then that way you will have time so uh, i would say don't really wait until wednesday to court and that would really overwhelm you over time because we know our 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 challenges are designed to start from Monday. If you miss a couple of hours on Monday, you will feel it. And if you miss Monday, you will feel the pressure tomorrow. And if you miss tomorrow, then you really, really start being quite overwhelmed because they are tight. You know, as you can see, like it's four big tasks in each of them are given, right? And it's five now. Um, and so, it probably might be overwhelming. So I would say, I would advise, yes, learn, read, but do at the same time. Don't try to understand so deep the, the part because that's not the point and it's really not a point. It even works against you. The more you know, the less you're gonna be really fulfilling, you know, submitting good submissions because you're gonna be overthinking it. So I would say that. So, okay, I understand. 
Yeah. I, I just do that like to minimize mistakes and you know to clean up yeah, my I, I, I understand and I think you know of course we are very like it's a work environment more or less simulating at least so we we whatever works it works for us but from experience it's better that way but we are much more interested of course that you finish and you strategize and your mindset for intensive work is is in the right direction so we don't we don't have like this very hardcore guideline do this do that we don't do that if it works for you you know at, at the end of the day we want the work to be done you know, just like any work okay, okay. and natanania uh so uh the drafts what do you mean by draft it means like entry means basically just its own and then the final submission is its own of course you can build whatever you have in the entry you can put it in the in the final but the two sat satisfy different things one is an update now think of it uh, an investor the first part is of course the deadline is by saturday um or and you're going to present to the, the the investor on sunday afternoon let's imagine but they want to have a contact uh on in the middle of the week to know at least you are not you know you, it's not going to be a surprise for them on sunday because you say like yo i was overwhelmed and you know i didn't do anything and therefore by the midweek they want to know exactly what you what you have done so far so that to estimate you know to under you know to gauge their expectation to align their expectation so wednesday submission is basically that just describe what you have done so far what you have achieved and what is your plan and how do you try to achieve everything that is said discussed um by saturday and anything that you can use for on on saturday you can use it but it's not it's not like submit yes you have to submit a draft i mean a draft everything is a draft but um of course that draft is also a blog uh, some people you will see a lot of people would then submit their submission either on saturday or something and they they submit a link as well so they publish it on medium and then they submit that one but yeah so on you can call it a draft but uh on on wednesday and submit that in the full thing on saturday so whichever you understand if if, if what i say doesn't is confused you please ask it again but i hope that's clear abraham okay good uh, afternoon everyone uh i just wanted to have some things uh, all gathered the ones we discussed right now yeah. so the tasks uh, under listed uh, on the introduction task yeah. two, three, four, and five. Do we have them uh, uh, as EDA? Do we understand them as EDA just to have a gathering? So it's both EDA, time series, modeling. So some so the task one, you know, if you look at just inside them, like for example, um, task two, you know, it, this is much more of EDA, right? It's just a you know start by identifying top like so if you look top 2.1 you know aggregate per user following information of these columns this is eda that means basically you are just doing you know looking at the plots task 2.2 .2, uh this is describe uh, analyze the basic metrics mean median of it you can use describe also from pandas conduct and then graphical univariate analysis that's basically you plot the distribution and you know whatever you do the missing you learn about the missing value and all that you know you start filling and all that and then conduct a univariate analysis again most suitable plotting you know uh, interpret your finding you know this is just much more eda as you do in your jupyter notebook and then you do some kind of you know scattering but you don't have to do just as it is listed here this is more really if you are lost you can just follow this and it's sufficient so we usually this is the minimum sufficient to do but you can do more and the order doesn't matter but all what is important is this helps understand the data so these are all eda's but in correlation analysis you can consider them as eda as well so it's like you can start correlating between so you can plot correlation metrics and dimensionality reduction this is another form of you know um, data munging so stuff like that in user in task three, a lot of the again is uh, um, uh, let's say EDA, but but then also here, for example, 
you are going to do some kind of chemist clustering and interpret, interpret them, right? So that's again a kind of modeling. And, and so it's a combination. So it's EDA plus modeling. And when you build dashboard, because also it's asking you to build dashboard, that's more than EDA, it's also deployment. Yeah, does that make sense? So in work, yeah. there is no such thing as just EDA only, but while you do EDA, you might do modeling. The modeling can be part of EDA, definitely. So in this case, the K-means clustering is modeling, but you know, you are modeling something to understand the data, so it's part of EDA. Sometimes you have understood the data and now you go, you're actually trying to do something more. And in that case, you know, the modeling becomes on its own. But within EDA, there is modeling. Within EDA, there's a lot of stuff as well. So it's not a linear thing. It's a, yeah, hopefully that's clear. OK. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Lulsa get asked, is our first submission on Wednesday exactly? So almost always you will it will get you will get used to this the challenge document. Yeah, what is on the deliverable means you know what you are expected and you will be communicated. But so exactly because it is Wednesday and the final is Saturday, so there is going to be only two submissions. And in the first day submission, there is going to be one for your slide, the interim slide, and then your GitHub link. So that's two two links you have to you know two things you have to submit on Wednesday um, um, twenty UTC, and then on Saturday you will you will put something three one report on your in a streamlit source code review and the other one is on your final um, uh, report uh, slide and then a GitHub link and and then some slide some screenshots or some links on your deployed so they are combined okay. Hopefully that's clear, Lul Saget. Okay. I hope this is clear. And so I would leave you just we finish just our hour. And yeah, it's exciting. It's a lot in the beginning, but you know, do just like when you are going up a hill, normally it feels like wow, uh, you know, you will never reach the top. But almost always Saturday, you will reach on the on the top, and then you say, like, "Wow, you know, it's not that bad," and you will you will feel good, and you will sleep on Sunday so well, and then Monday starts again, and then that rhythm start becoming addictive. So yeah, with that, I would leave you, so we can stop the recording and good luck. And any questions, as usual, you know, Nana is there to help you. We are there to help you, and discuss everybody's there to help everyone else so yeah it's a community we at we we become we excel our own expectations through our you know community through our own support right so yeah good luck thanks everyone